you can hear me right yes so we just gonna start with the tutorial since it's Saturday I'm not gonna take much of your time and people joining in just gonna show you the screen And see this in the Can you do the sample formation? One of you. You can see my screen. So, first, I'm just going to share you the slide. You can follow up along with me. There won't be much theory. We're just gonna dive to in the practical part. The three things we're gonna see mainly would be deep dive on git commits, git merge, and git actions. So we will see them their definition along with uh, some examples on them. So let's start from git commit and open this documentation on the slide, which gives you some commands we can implement now. You see different aspects on git commit uh, how we can undo a push commit how can we revert a file that we already pushed so we will see them in practice so i have an already set up react application so i'm going to take example uh, this git practice on a react app so it, it will work for any app. So it's just the application that I choose for this presentation. Okay, this I found the first thing on the documentation here on commit. So uh, I'm gonna assume you all guys know how to create a repo, and I mean you have done it a lot of times by now, so you know how to get push input. So we're not gonna waste much time on that that we will see these topics. So first, let's see uh, our branch here. By so this command, you can see. I didn't create any for it, so let's just first create it for this. Okay, so Push and push it, let's see how much. We only have me right now. Push it. So let's see from the status of uh, your commercial, see the status of your commit. So this status will show you if there are untracked commits on your application. So the first thing you do before you commit your work is you you, start, you stage it right on the uh, to be ready for commit. So the status part will show you how much files are being uh, tracked or staged and how much are, aren't. 
So let's just first make uh, some kind of change on the application. So see any change. And now if I click its status, it will give me some kind of report saying that uh, on the after js file there is unstitched uh, file there is unstitched commit so you have to stage it before committing so it gives you some kind of instruction you should uh, you get add and then commit it then it will be uh, so the git status will show you which files are committed or a state or not before commission so let against uh, it is some another file on this SS maybe so uh the object is a paragraph so let me you can change let's say I want to change the paragraph on finally if I again click start, I have to unstitch uh, changes on my app. So there, are, there is a common way that you guys commit probably you say git add git add dot. It will stitch everything change you have. Then you can say git commit. You can do like like this, but when you are working in an organization or with a lot of groups, co committing everything that you've done in different components might not be the right way or the recommended way because they will see one commit, but they don't know which uh, they have to go through every commit. You have to specify if what changes you made in each commit when you create this message. So the purpose of this writing commit messages to show others or yourself in the future when you go back to your project, uh, what changes you have made on a particular component. So if I add sign up uh, function in my in, in my component, if I just make sure I commit only that, when I go back to or someone just uh, see I have added uh, a sign up functionality on my component, the only commit they will see on that particular function would be the sign up. But if I have this change here, the Python code change, and if I add another button, this this is simple examples, but co consider this one. This is a sign up uh, function, and I added another here. I'm just gonna say button, just cons but consider like this is uh, a function to send, send to send an email or notification to some other. So these are two different functions, right? This is a sign up sign up function. And this one is a notification function you made on your component. So if we use git add and commit everything together, someone has to look over everything to see different changes on a in, on your chain, on different changes, different functionalities on one commit. So that's not advisable. It's okay to do that, but that's not advisable. So if you make a sign up functionality on your application, just make sure to submit only that. The sign up. So when that particular commit message only will be referred to the sign up one, not more functionalities. So by that I don't mean that when you make a sign up functionality, when you then coding that, you have to make a commit, and when you then the functionality, you have to make on the commit. That will just make uh, a lot of things uh, to commit over and over again before you finalize what you want to do. It's not do that. You can just code your work here as much as you want different functionalities, but you can specify how you commit that. How you will do that is by using this functionality. So I can choose from, I have made two changes from here. If I make heap status on my app, I have made uh, heap up to JS, I have made changes, but if I want to see what particular changes I made on git up to JS, I can use this command. Deep, deep, SRC, up to JS. So this function, this command, this command will show you uh, the changes you made in, in your uh, work. So it will, it will show me I have made this a Python change to sign up, and I have made another change 
Python, uh, I mean, button notification and other functionality. So I can choose to commit only this functionality or I can choose to commit this functionality. Without deleting anything, I can choose how I commit them. So from this function, I can just make sure to push only this change. So how I will do that is, let's go back to the documentation here. You can see it. I pass this step. Uh, this step is only to, if I want, if I have, uh, just to, just, uh, we will go back on this one. If I have changes on the up to JS in index those CSS file, if I want only to commit the up to JS component as a whole, I can just say, instead of git dot add, I can say git dot uh, git add the parsing of the file and commit a message and push. Now, I think this is simple, but if you want, I can show you. You can stop me and ask me. So now let's just see how you can, in the same component, if you have different changes, how you can uh, patch or different uh, specify only specific changes on your component to be committed. So now let's say we want to only commit this notification. I have made two changes, but I want to only push this notification functionality. So what I'm going to do is hit at minus p, which is what it will uh, divide them in parts. Every change I made, it will divide them in parts and it will confirm me which one I want to commit or I want to stage first. Yeah, you can see it here. Let me just give another example. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm doing this somewhere. Let's just add another question.
Okay, let me just go back to this one. It's not working as it's not possible. Okay, we'll go back to this one. Let's see how we can undo a commit here. So I have made this new change. I want to go back to this commit. I want to revert my commit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, copy the hash file from here. We then use reset. Uh, Git log is to see for me how much can we have so far. Git log is our me. Or uh, this is another way of seeing your Git log. It will mean my git log in one line. So, and just I will minimize this informations and it will give you the in one line the git report. So now if I want to commit back to this file, this one, I'm gonna to to use the git reset command arch and just space your uh, hash file. So we go back to you see the git file you find when you initialize it under ribs in hit folder and when you open the main file text file you can see it show you currently the hash is found in this hash key which is which is correct this one e zero three so when i reset it this file has uh, has changed to the new head to the new head which will be the second one. You can also back move back uh, in one command to here also. You don't have it, it doesn't have to be a step forward through this to this. It, it's not like that. You can jump from here to here. There's also issues to do that. So let's just see if we can do this to the second one. Now we're showing it is now at its report. Uh, if I refresh this one, I will not see the change. As it is, but to see the change, I have to push it first. So just say git push force. You know, if I refresh it, you will see the head has been changed to this one. Now you only have to connect. You can reset back. You can revert your commit by this way. So now, if I again see the main file here, commit is open again. It will show to this one. So if we, you make a unwanted commit, you can reset it back within this command. Uh, there is um, revert command. There's a difference between reset and revert. Revert will not will revert your last work if you commit some change as uh, changes on your component or anything. You can revert the change on, but you cannot change uh, the commit like the like we said from here. You can just revert back the changes that you made from that file without changing the commit, and it will create another commit setting. It has been the work you have done on the last commit has been reverted. So let's just say 
this example to simulated graph. So if we go back to here, the change we made is adding the Python file, I think, on the second commit. Then see the changes that we made in this commit. This is what, yeah, we add the Python. So we're going to revert this change only from the upload JS back to the first one we like to us. But it will not change the commits here. The commit will still exist. But again, we will have a new commit saying there has been a reversion in the component. So let's just copy again the hash file and revert what we like to do. So it's reversed. See, the Python has been removed. Uh, so you will have this message like this. Just say skip. You can change the message if you want to, or we can leave it as it is. The message will be reversed to this page. So just click skip, then write the BQ. So Python has been removed. We will try this one. Okay, we have to push it first. Oops. This, this uh, former commit, which has a Python functionality, will not be removed, but the uh, code has been reverted with, again, another commit indicating that. This is the difference between reverse and reset on commits. Mm, the other thing I want to show you is when you write your commits, you have to be as descriptive as possible. Uh, that is the best practice. You can write any message, but the best practice is defining what you are committing is the best practice. So when you write a git commit minus m, First, let's just make some kind of change here. Have to it up. You can write it like this with the command you have and write any message you want. You know, usually we write one line of code, uh, but if you want to have more a descriptive message, you can just stop at git commit and enter. When you enter, it will give you this kind of platform, write everything uh, that you want to write on the commit. So just click the uh, I. I have shown this, uh, what I'm clicking on my keyboard here. I, I passed it here, yeah. Click I to write the message, and after, you finish writing the message, make sure to click the skip um, keyboard on your uh, icon on your keyboard. And after that, write this colon wt, then enter, then the message is committed, will be saved. So if I go back here, so I'm just going to click the i from my keyboard, then I can write any message. So I'm, I am can say here, uh, added. On the app component. So if I want to be more descriptive, I can just click in that and say uh, I have used the heading. So you can write as much as uh, you can write you can write a lot of message indicating what I have done using this way. There's no limit. You can use this approach also to write your commit. So I'm showing you this because writing a descriptive commit is considered a best practice, especially when you are creating in an organization group for people. So to save it, you first click the skip button, then that's right, the WQ, and just enter. Now it's saved. All you have to do is just push, like you would do in it. After you commit, just run this command. 
este, 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 And click on it, you can see the detailed description here if, if you come with message. So it can be very helpful when you work, even for yourself in the future, when you refer your work back and for other sorts of. Let's try the one that doesn't work, that didn't work before again. So let's just add for the PTAG font family. And for the H2 tag, yeah. This isn't this isn't working as I hope it would. I'm not I don't know what I did. Um, Did I get what? Okay. There's some mistake that I did, but I'll figure it out. Uh, and I'll go back to you. But the purpose was that this and the patch purpose was if I want to just commit this one, I have I can do that using these commands. Maybe I must have missing something. Uh, so I would look into that again. And if you want only to do to commit this one, you have the option to do that with this option. So you can uh, control your how you commit your work using this com uh, command. So uh, you guys try it out and now to see the problem in the back here again. Now let's just move on to merge merging. I think we have seen most of the commands. So to see merging in practice, we have to have more than one branch. So right now we have only the main branch, and then we we'll just create another branch to see what it can do. Okay, I have created a branch in case. 
So on this case, branch, then we just change some changes. Well, let me just change the color here. Okay. Here, this is a change. So the main have the former color, and this one had this one. So let's push first this change. I think you already know it, but I'm just going to show it if there's if someone who doesn't. And um, uh, we will also create a conflict, and we'll see how we can resolve that conflict when we are doing a merge. So first, let's just add this one. I think this will probably uh, create a conflict, uh, and we'll fix it. Click commits. One thing, then color change. Push. We need to get the branches. It will ask you to push it like this way, so make sure to do that. Now I want to pull uh, to merge my test on my main branch. So to if you want to when you when you do merging using the command here. Uh, before I show you the merge, there will be some change on here. I want as you should see. So when I push a test. On, on on my branch on the uh, other than the main branch uh, when you push every, you will get this compare and pull request option so the pull and request option the purpose is to, is doing a merging purpose so if there's an admin of this uh, particular uh, repo and others are working on the branch so the admin can verify before merging their work on their main. So yeah, it can come from the GitHub uh, dashboard and just click this one, see the work they have done, the commits, you can, you can read it here and see they have done. And if it, uh, if it agree with their changes, it can create the pull request and then merge it. Let's just uh, see the process from here first and you'll see it from the course side or the command side on the Terminal. So uh, if I, if I agree with the work, I will just say merge pull request and confirm merge. You can do merge by this way, and you can do it also from this side. So since I already made this one, I need to create another change and show you from the command side what you will do if there's a conflict. So it's merged. There's seven commits, and the test will probably have the same commit, six commits. So we can see. Uh, the co the conflict by here. So uh, to make sure the test also is in the same level as the main, I can merge the main on the test on the test branch and pull every every changes on the main back to the test if I want that. So let's just do that instead of creating a new change. We can do that. So let's just if I want to merge the main on the test, I have to be on the test branch. I cannot do it from the dashboard, but I can do it from here. So let me let first be on the test branch. Next branch, I think you are on the test. Okay. So if I want to merge the main on the test, all I have to do is say merge. Already up to date. I have to first be push the change that I made. This is not out Now, if I check out to the test part, I don't think I have to, there won't be much change here, but I can now. Merge the new change that I put on the main branch on my local machine. So git merge. Just 
see if we can see the merge without some push. Of course. It's up to date now. Both have a uh, half. In the same commit, everything is working perfectly fine. Now let's create a conflict between them and to see how we can resolve it. So now we are on the test branch. And what we can do? Can we go back to the after JS? The main now have React and heading two. So let's add, no, let's just edit this one. In Academy and push it. Let's just back to the main and merge the test on the main. Let's merge the test branch. It's not creating the conflict. And we, we're just going to try after that until we get some kind of error. It's working perfectly fine till now. Perfect. I couldn't create a conflict. I was hoping to create a conflict and show you how we can fix that, but it's working fine again. So what kind of conflict could we create? Then they are in sync. Um, let's create another error.
I think you know, it will work. Let's just click up the checkout and we kind of just change the here instead of this create another to do um Okay, now let's merge that the test on the main. Hopefully now it will cause an error. Let's merge this. Yeah, this is the error that I want. And now we have this conflict because on the main we have this uh, button on, on the test we have the nav tag, which are different. So it will create a conflict. So when this kind of conflict happen, it will happen especially when you do a lot of projects. Conflicts happen and they are really annoying to fix them. Uh, the choice you have to fix this kind of conflict is to manually go to the code and make sure the changes are similar on both sides. Either remove from one of them and merge again or accept both changes. So by default, the, the extension that you you all probably have it, the base code by default will give you this option. You can see it here. Uh, you say on the main branch, which we are right now, you, there is a button and it's showing me on the test branch, I have this nav tab, which are different. So it will ask me either to accept the current change, which means the test change, it will remove the button one and accept this one, or accept the incoming change, which is this one, the current change would be this one, the incoming change, the one that will come when you merge from the test branch. So if I click this one, it will only accept the nav tab and remove this one. Or you have the option to accept both. So this option you, you get because I'm using the base code editor. But if I don't have the base editor or if I have another editor, the option I have is to manually go to both the test branch and the main branch and make a change to make the change similar. Either I can make sure to add this button also or there uh, and add this one on the main app.js file by, by manually copy pasting or fixing it. So I'm really just going to use the base code extension advantage and say access post changes. And when I click this, it will add the change here. So all I have to do now is I already told the conflict. So if I say merge this, first I think I have to push it, push the change. Or let's just say merge this and see what it will say. We have to push it first. The resolved uh, solution has to be pushed. I think we need to commit it first. Get get edge. Commit. Then you commit in the changed solution. Then complete result. Result. Now to push. I'm doing this on my main branch. Now, if I say it merge the this branch, since both have the same file right now, it will accept it. This layer. So if we go back to here and see the new change, I think this change is And we have now, because we have made, I have made two push, I guess, on the main branch. So that the main branch, that is branch is behind the main branch by two commits. So I have to also, uh, pass those commits on my test. So I have to be on my test branch and merge my main so I can get this new commit that I did. Commit resolved, commit is only found on the main right now. So that's why we are, you are getting this kind of, we are behind the commit. This is 10 commit, that one is the commit. So to resolve this one, all you have to do is be on your test branch. 
что еще и соседний фон. Now just say merge me to teach the two commits coming to your test. Then just say push into course. Now everything is up to date. So this is how you will do merging and resolve conflicts uh, in Git. Uh, there is conflict. Okay, now we are done with the command that I want to show you, except this one. Uh, I will fix it and show you again later. Now let's just move on to the Git action. Another a good point to have on GitHub, this action, Git action. So I have a wrapped up. The action purpose is to create a CICD pipeline. I'm sure you heard of it before. So if you want to create a CICD pipeline to control your workflow, sorry, I have a background noise. So I'm just going to, sorry for that few. So let's just move on. And we're going to create a CICD pipeline to control our workflow on our GitHub. So for part garlic, we will see how we can do this for React. So go to the action page here. So since we have a React app, we, which will is running on your JS, uh, it will give you suggested repository to run your CI CD pipeline. It has default uh, different integrations here. So I'm just gonna choose Node.js for that. For different projects, the action might be different. The integration this uh, you will use will be different. So when that happens, there's solutions on the internet you will figure out, but we'll focus here now on React. So let's say we want to configure Node.js to create our CI/CD pipeline. So this is a YAML file that it will create by default. Uh, it will show you here the YAML file has this the own, the jobs, the steps, and the actions, components inside of it. Here you will, this is the part where an event will be triggered. So every time there's a push or a pull, this CID pipeline will run and check every code that you have put it on your application. And if there's an error, it will draw an error. And if there isn't, it will pass the build. So this is the event that I specify. I want this uh, of oh, the default has the push in the pool requests if you want to create another um, event that is happening on your github you can add it here so we are not going to go into it on the yaml, lang YAML language i'm going to give you a recommendation to read out that up on. Uh, there is a job this is where uh, you specify where this particular yaml file will run uh, the node versions of your application mine is 8x, so I'm just going to remove this one. My new version on my laptop is this. The steps that it will take, these are the steps. It will check this one, this one, uh, it will check the node version. If there's test tip, it will do that. So let's just commit this one and we'll see it on our basic code. Commit the change. So when you commit the change, which is you made a push, right? So the action will run here it's running since we made a push we made a commit it will run so how it will run you can just click here to see how it's doing the running part so it will check everything it will check the app the actions the steps that are put on the yaml it will be checked by your action file so let's see if it passes or not we haven't done anything so it will probably pass Case, case. Checking my version here in my actions, everything passed. So the build is successful. So I can control my, uh, if I have, especially if you see the open source projects out there like Redash and everything, they have this pipeline because it's open source. A lot of people pushed on their repository so they can check 
everything. Uh, they don't have to manually check everything. They don't want to specify on the YAML. The CI department will do the checking for them. If, they, if there's any errors, they will be notified. So you can just make a lot of things easier for you. So here I want to mention when you install React with Byte uh, and do this process that I did, it will fit because the React Byte doesn't have a test file here. This one, this reacts and is followed by the documentation. This one, by default, have a test file that the byte doesn't have. Uh, it's okay. You can create a test file, or you can remove this testing uh, action from the YAML. So first, let's just pull the YAML file, and let me just show you. I think we are on the branch or let's check out on the name. This is the YAML file we just created. Let's just open it here and see what it contains. You see it here, it contains an in, 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 sorry, anything test command. So for why just remove it and it will pass because it doesn't have a test file. Either you can remove it or add a test file for the components and it will run the test. So in case you are using white, I just want to mention that. So everything you control for the pipeline, how it's run, you specify here. So now let's just say we want to uh, deploy this application, this React application online. And you, I'm going to show you how you can add the commands here. Also, to have a full CID pipeline from the first to up to deployment. So we're going to use this package. We're going to deploy the React app on the GitHub. GitHub app has the option to deploy your applications on their platform. And to do that, you have to just install this in, in a GH hits package. This is a GitHub package. It will let you to deploy for free on their platform which uh, will give you URL and stuff like that, which is the steps. And it will also give you commands to put on the YAML to test, to put, uh, to test also your deployment. Every time someone push, the changes will also be seen on your website, on your URL that will be created using this app. So I already created, uh, installed the, the package. I already installed it. Now I'm just, we just gonna, by a few steps, we just gonna, I'm gonna show you what you will have to do to make sure your pipeline also checks your production. So let's just go to the package part. And just copy this one. And the package, this is where you identify your URL. So make sure that when you install your React app, by default, you will get a name, right? So make sure this is similar with this one. This is the GitHub IO. This is their default platform to let anyone deploy their application through the GitHub. This is the one thing you have to do. And the other thing is this one. You want to deploy your React app using this package. So put it under your script. And you, you have to make some changes on the YAML so that it, it can read this package, uh, this file, to also should make sure your deployment is fine every time a change is made. So it also specifies on the package to put the, this command under the script in your package.json. Since I already done that, let's just pick this one and put it in our YAML file. Yeah, and here, just Everything was fine. Now let's prove and see if everything is working fine. So the first time it will probably will fail, but we'll see that it's added for me. My team is going. Yeah. 
Let's go back to our actions. There is a new this commit I did just now. We can see if there is a failure or stating everything that I put on the YAML is testing everything. This is the pipeline. As expected, it failed the first time round. This let's see what the error says. So you can see the error is in big set to here it's saying you have you don't have permission to the GitHub uh, action doesn't have permission to deploy uh, your ramp up on the GH pages on the on the on page. So all we have to do is go to the staking part. This is the action part. We have a permission denied here on the general here. You can allow it have actions to access my repo. So I'm giving it right a permission. Save. This is an event. I just triggered an event by saving. So again, an action will be triggered. Let's just push it again and don't want to create an introduction. Here, let's just make some change on the track. Project and new build testing everything again. Let's see if it passes this time. Now it passed without an error. So now it, the deployment it has been successful and it has been tested by the pipeline. Now we have to see if the deployment work by going to see the URL. The URL is the one that is specified here on the package JSON. So let's see if the, everything is run correctly. It should run. That would probably show an error too. Just saying, one or four error. So again, it needs some kind of a configuration. This is the GitHub page file, which lets you access this package to deploy your work on their platform. So here, uh, we didn't choose for it the GH page. Let's just save it. Now we can access. There's an action. Uh, yeah, this is this one is finished. This process you will do it only one time. After after it works, anything change you made, you will automatically see it on your. Um, after the CI/CD pipeline finished building, you will see it also on the on the URL on the website. This is if you deploy your app. This configuration is if you deploy it on the GitHub platform. But you can deploy it on AWS, you can deploy it using Docker. So when you do use another, another tools, your configuration will also be different on the YAML. So you have to adjust that accordingly.
the date has passed. If the date is passed, you will have this right check. And if it fails, you will get X here. So now everything is not compiled. Let's just refresh it here. Well, so now if I make a change on my app.js, and then again, I don't have to do the step that I did before. All I have to do is just push me. Here, you have to wait for the build to finish. So when it's building, it will show you this kind of icon. So you can read. When it finishes, it is completed. If it failed, it is failed. So we have to wait for it. If you want to see it like before, just click here also, you can hear it, or you can see on the action part and see the deployment in detail that I did before. That it is finished. Now, if I refresh this one, It's uh, again, we use the change immediately. So the CID pipeline is the purpose is this one. You use Git actions. So in production level, in professional level, you will use this part more often. Uh, again, this YAML file, there are different kind of uh, configuration you have based on your purpose and your need. Uh, if you want to make sure a syntax check, you can use a splinter YAML to do a syntax check. So every, every time there is a syntax problem on your code, it will throw an error. So you have to check that. So depending on your need, you can adjust that one. So I think this is the main thing that I want to show, except one thing that, that doesn't work before, uh, but look, it will work. You just look into it. So the other things I'm, I'm going to recommend you to read up on for future would be branching strategies and models. So when you are building a team project, you will have a lot of branches and a lot of a lot of branches. So how you can uh, control the branches between different people, there are some strategies out there. Uh, it depends on the strategy depends on your needs. They are not standardized uh, guidelines to follow. It's just you can refer to other people strategies how they manage their branching uh, you can see their model so read up on that it can be useful for future purpose the other would be git base and git merge git base, rebase has the same functionality as git merge can be very confusing uh, i don't want to show you here right now because i don't want to confuse you but when you are on that stage where you are ready to read up on it please read up on it they have similarity very uh, high similarity, but they have also slight difference that can that differentiate them. But I want you guys to see the great difference with practice. Uh, Git repeats can be dangerous if you don't know how to use it because it's similar to Git merge. It can confuse you. But when you have just a lot of projects, a lot of organizational projects with a lot of people working on, when you use Git repeats, it can cause a problem. So or not just stick with git merge when you are on that level of understanding just revise this way best they have difference but you have to know you have to use it carefully uh, the other would be uh, to see about such what you can do uh, git log and git by uh, the difference check up on that read up on the other file how you can write it how you can configure it for different tools today we just see how we can configure it for node.js but for others, they have different configuration. You can test that 
on that to have a full working GitHub pipeline. Uh, the other GitHub uh, GitHub projects you can see it here. This GitHub project has its own functionality, its own functionality. So you can write uh, up on that to see what you can do with GitHub uh, projects use case. So I've already put it also reference for this one. Mm, there are a lot of Git commands in use cases that I have mentioned here. So uh, make sure to recharge on those two. Uh, what is this? Yeah. Here, the other is just simple things. Every pull request you make on your account, you will see it here. If you make a play, you will see it here. Your pull request, since we already solved the pull request image before, it is showing me it's closed right now. But if I have pull request that hasn't been uh, closed, it's still open. You will see that the list here issues. Uh, if any of you have this access to this repository and if you have issues with this, this report, you can just create a new issue here and you can write down your comments there. So when I can, every time I come back to my report, I can see the issues made by other people. Uh, I can answer them back like a message. So on your, uh, I think, Oh, this wasn't really just this request is issues and pull requests it will also come up on your profile i mean other people can see how much how many pull requests you've made how many issues you have made so it can also can be uh, as a portfolio for you so the more you have git pull requests and stuff like that people will force that you have more skill on organizational projects you have it's just a kind of as a show off of your work so uh, try to see every functionality there is on github uh, i have put some links uh, this is end of the story so if you have any question you can ask of oh, this is uh, these are the four points uh, is it clear Do you have any questions or if it's clear just give some yeah yeah you are asking more questions on github so you have any questions or uh have... yes i do have some questions um uh, i was trying to clean up my uh, past projects so that they can be uh, presentable uh i got some new techniques from this tutorial, I believe. So I will try to use them. Uh, in, in addition, uh, does any specific project, for example, the project that we are working on, the, the file structure, does it have any kind of structure that we need to follow is starting from the folders the readme file uh, the dot ignore all those those are some things that i need to work on uh, yeah. maybe i can show you my one of my projects and tell me what's good what's bad and give me some insight on just on the Side, you need to have a very detailed written read me. Yes. Uh, this yeah. this action that I just showed you, it's really necessary yeah. to have it. I mean, it, it, it increases your value. Uh, yeah. if you, especially when you work for clients and stuff, it's really important to have it. It does much of the testing for you based on what you set up. So these are much more important. So Git ignore really is important, I and mean, I don't have to mention that. I guess. So you do know how you can set up Git ignore, right? Just have to specify yeah. them. Yes. Yeah. So read me. Most of you or in your submissions, you most of you don't write read me. So please make sure to have a detailed read me, to have an introduction, yeah. everything on installation to your app. Someone when they see your repo, they also have to know how they can run it. So you okay. make sure installation instructions on your readme. So from what I've seen, you, a lot of you don't read readme. So make sure to add that. It can add a value for you when you show update your readme, uh, your projects for clients, uh, even for these job interviews. 
they will they will see your projects through your readme not they will not see your codes the first thing they did make sure is reading your readme so i would highly uh, point that one so how you can write readme there are a lot of references on how you can write them to have more better uh, syntax or beautiful structures for your readme so uh, again read up on that also Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Any other question? Yeah, there's a lot of discussion on the chat. Uh, Nikias, with the open AI key problem, uh, next quota, please reach out to Fugger. She will help you with that problem. Yes, you're going to have a break this week. Okay, um, guess make sure to reach out to Fugger for both your questions. Uh, you can reach out to us on the Slack and the tutors. We will help you. If there is any question, if you decide to work on the project, how to set up actions if you have different projects in the repo. Yeah. So, finally, like I said, the YAML file that you write for different projects would be the setup, the structure is the same, but the setup that you use depend on the package or the tools you are using. So, the the, fi the final code that I put is for particularly for JS uh, if I deployed it on in the GitHub platform, but if you decide on the Docker or AWS, they have their own documentation for the YAML file. So you have to deep, deep search to make sure your GitHub action read those tools also on their pipeline. So this is particularly for Re React or Node.js. They have different configuration okay. what are the main parts of readme to focus on the retail project there should be an introduction to indicate what the projects have uh, if you want I mean, you can be creative as you want but introduction should 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 it is a mess uh, it should have an installation guide for someone who wants to run your code and see what you have done uh, if you can have uh, some installation steps that would be fine. Uh, you can have a content, some kind of, uh, I mean, content. You can you can be as creative as you want, Rudolf. But don't forget to have an introduction and an installation step. That is the one thing that I would point out. That you can be creative as you want on your readme or take project. Okay, great, Nikias. I'm glad she's helping you. I have took so much of internet time. So I apologize for that, but I hope these tactics are helpful. Uh, so if you have any questions, you can reach out or comment. This is our last meeting. So I would, uh, I would, I would give you five minutes just to give me some kind of criticism for my performance as your tutor for future. Uh, I would want to hear some from one to or three to pick up. If my voice is too slow, if I talk too fast, I would appreciate if some of you just speak as an evaluation for me. Okay, uh, Rahmat, while they think about this, uh, should I stop the recording and start a new yeah, one yeah, for yeah. the next yes, one? Yes, we can do that.